Another American city finds itself without access to safe, drinkable water. But don't worry, it wasn't some big pipeline that ruined the water. It was a regular pipe hooked up to an oil refinery. Uh, this time it's Corpus Christi, Texas, and a third of a million Americans are at least temporarily without access to water. The problems occurred after an estimated 3 to 24 gallons of a petroleum-based chemical called Indulin AA86 uh, seeped into the city's water because of a backflow from an area oil refinery. Which is interesting because generally they're supposed to have uh, backflow regulators that stop that from happening, but we'll return to that in just a little bit. Uh, let's find out what it is that people are accidentally drinking. Uh, Indulin AA86, which is used as an asphalt emollient, is considered hazardous by the Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration. It can cause burns to the eyes, skin, and respiratory tract. The city announced Thursday that it will give out 27,000 cases of donated bottled water and, and that over 100,000 cases are on their way to the city. Uh, at least at present, each family was only allowed two cases. Now, that, for drinking purposes, sounds totally reasonable, but understand that not only can you not drink this water, but you can't come into contact with this water. You can't even clean your clothes with it because it will then later on burn your skin. Uh, and this is not the only problem that Corpus Christi has had. They've had numerous instances of bacterial infection of their water supply over the past 17 months. They have 225 miles of cast iron pipe, more than half of which needs to be upgraded. Because many of the pipes are, uh, were installed over 60 years ago, when they decay, they're prone to collapse or to slow water flow, allowing bacteria to fester. And not just to hypothetically fester, as we've said, they've had multiple instances of E. coli and other uh, bacterial infections that have had uh, effects on the people of Corpus Christi. So apparently one of the issues here is that the city does not regulate, they regulate their citizens. So if you live in Corpus Christi, you have all sorts of regulations about what you can and can't do with your house, your water, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, they don't regulate the companies as much, yeah. which is so backwards, it, it makes your head hurt. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in the new corrupted America, that's how it is. Yeah. Like, so a lot of uh, conservatives think, oh, it's, oh, there's so much over-regulation. You're right, when it comes to you. Yes, you can't fish without a permit. You can't, you know, you've got to have, make sure you have water stopper or whatever it's called in yeah. your house, et cetera, right? But, but the, some of the corporations don't have any regulations. Yeah. You want to find out a little bit more about the corporate situation? Yes. Because thankfully, in this case, uh, we had a source in Corpus Christi. It's uh, Stefania uh, Jimenez, anchor of KRIS uh, 6 News in Corpus Christi. She provided some additional information because the situation is thankfully changing a little bit for the better in some cases. Uh, the company that appears to be responsible at present is Ergon Asphalt and Emulsions. They lease uh, space along the industrial district from Valero, which is an oil company. Uh, according to the city, some parts of the city are now free and clear to use the water. They have different uh, zones of contamination, and if you're a resident of Corpus Christi, you can go uh, online. They have a map that's available so you can find out which zone you're in. I would still be careful for the next little bit. Uh, some parts of the city, as we said, are free and clear. Some are under a partial water ban, meaning that people can go back to bathing and cleaning with the water, but you still can't drink it, which is not, that's not high praise. For Who's got to bathe in that there. water? Too. It's like, like I mean, you know what? I, I think I'm going to risk it. I don't right. think so. Uh, some parts uh, along the industrial district are still under a complete ban. And uh, right now, the big question is, did they actually have the backflow uh, preventer that they're supposed to have? Um, the city says that they don't, although the city also says that Aragon and Valero both say that they do. So apparently the city doesn't believe them. Uh, hopefully we'll know for sure in the very near future. By the way, and that again is thanks to Stefania uh, Jimenez, so thank you for her work. And she is doing videos uh, on TYT politics. So if you want to get more on the story, more details on the company, and, and she's also interviewing the affected residents uh, yeah. in Corpus Christi. So go to youtube.com slash TYT politics. And check out that work. Okay. One one thing to point out, though, that, that you know, oftentimes you hear about water being contaminated, and they say, well, you can boil water to bathe, and you you cannot boil you this away. You can't uh, boil it. You can't add bleach you can, or anything right, else. Chlorine or anything Freezing. like that. Freezing. So it's it's uh, that. And, and the other thing to realize, unlike when oil spills affect the ocean or people that they don't really care about, these oil companies. Corpus Christi is a is has a such a high density of people who work in the petroleum business that 
I would imagine that they want to rectify this only because it's going to hurt their production if these people can't be drinking water and staying healthy and all of that. Th these are their team. Um, mm -hmm. and, that, that, and so they have a different kind of vested interest in, in rectifying this than they've ever had before. Let's see if that really does make a difference at all. It, look, I, I, I'm, I believe in capitalism, but we have an extreme run uh, runaway capitalism here in America with no regulation. So, and th boy, isn't this a symbol of it. Like the only reason why the company might care is, oh, that might affect production. Right. If it costs us a couple of pennies yeah. uh, because of production, then we might have to care about these things called humans. And, and so, look, we've unfortunately now slipped into being a third world country in a lot of ways, or a developing country. I mean, we we can't. I mean, if this, if you heard a story about this in Bolivia, and you said, oh my God, they can't even shower, they can't even boil the water, the wa their water is so contaminated, you say, oh, developing country, what are you going to do? But it's in Texas, it's, yeah. it's in the United States, and we're trying to protect water in North Dakota, uh, we've got a pipe another pipeline story in Texas, then we had a giant spill happen in another part of North Dakota that we, we told you about last week on the show, So and, and now this, and, and let alone Flint, Michigan, and then the lead poisoning in Indiana. So yeah. that leads to a couple of conclusions, w one is, we got to do better than this. We can't, like, we care so little about our citizens. Water is the most elementary thing that a government can deliver. In fact, one of the residents here was like, why do I pay taxes? I mean, if, if I can't be, if my water can't be protected, what am I paying taxes for? But the thing is, it's all getting diverted to the people who are running the country, and that is the corporations who are the donors uh, to these politicians. They don't represent us anymore. That's why your water is poisoned throughout the country. And the second part is, we have got to do massive infrastructure spending in this country. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, they talk about falling bridges, and that's certainly an issue, and you guys know how bad the roads are throughout the uh, different places in the country. But the pipes and, and the s simple basics like water, heating, etc., are all breaking down. So some of the developing countries now have, like if you go to China, they have uh, amazing infrastructure because they just built it. Like, two and a half days ago, right? We built it a long time ago. At some point, you've got to rebuild it. Otherwise, it falls apart. So, I mean, and Trump says he's going to do a lot of money in infrastructure spending. Uh, you know, I, there's not a lot I trust him on. He has good incentive to do it. And in this case, if he does do it, I'll give him a lot of credit because we, we should have done this a long time ago, and I hope he gets busy doing it. Infrastructure makes it cheaper for business to do business, right? It helps businesses, infrastructure. Why? If, and if corporations have a stranglehold on our government, which they do, why wouldn't they then push the government into doing infrastructure spending? Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't we have done it for the last 30 years? So that's what's confusing to me. If infrastructure spending is in the interest of business, which it is, mm -hmm. why are we doing it? Well, there are some some areas where I think they sort of do. Like the, the transportation like investment bills are always gigantic bloated things because there are corporations that are going to be doing the work of fixing up the roads and the highways and all that. So they have an incentive to push for it, which is why you can get certain forms of, uh, of spending across. In terms of the pipelines, I don't know that any well, of them have a direct incentive, but they do have an incentive to not have to install black backflow preventers because whatever they are, I guarantee they're expensive to install and maintain in your corporations, and they don't want to have to have them. They, like, it's, a lot of this is determined state by state, and it looks like some companies do use them, but if certain if certain politicians in this country had their way, you wouldn't have any of this. It'd be totally voluntary. Because also the precedent for infrastructure rebuilding at times when there have been major efforts in, in you know in the modern era of infrastructure, it's come um, with higher taxes. So yeah. the corporations themselves obviously don't want it because it means that they're going to be paying a higher rate of corporate tax. Well, and it's that, also and, and it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen under Donald Trump, any of it, but. Certainly, that's what it's been in the past. It's been sort of one of those um, bird calls. As soon as your dog whistles, as soon as you hear it, you know, infrastructure, that means taxes are going to go up because they have to pay for it somehow. That's why corporations have always been reluctant to, to be. But what if he back. said that? What if Donald Trump said that? Uh, I wouldn't we have believe to, him. Uh, no, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> what if the government said so we have to rebuild these pipes because it helps us fight ISIS? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would that be awesome. Right. We have all the money because well, let's that's, start how, to say that. that's how Eisenhower got the interstate system. Because someone else would system. say, well, you know, the terrorists are coming through the pipes. Yeah, yes, exactly. they're coming through so the pipes. So we need them to be rusty and dangerous. Right. Oh. Yeah. But if you recall also, in terms of the, the businesses' access to these resources, I don't know how um, representative this is, but we know from the experience in Flint 
that the, uh, some of the plants that were producing engines had access to alternative water sources because the terrible water that the people of Flint were expected to drink was corroding right. the engines. That's correct. So even as the infrastructure degraded, those who had political influence and access, they had access to the water they needed. That's right. Yeah, and Rexon Mobilson uh, complained <laughs> about uh, a water tower being built near his property uh, for fracking reasons, even though Exxon makes most of its money from fracking, not most, a lot of its oh, money yeah. from, it, from fracking. And, uh, and he said, yes, but this will disturb my horses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can't be disturbing their horses or their... Well, you know, in the background, like Mitt Romney yeah, slowly yeah. nodded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. yeah, watch out for the horses. Uh, right. They have spines. Yeah. I don't. And, and, and last thing is, to Michael's point, um, under Obama, they wanted to spend $600 billion in uh, stimulus spending. Uh, of course, the originally progressive said it should be a lot more, uh, and then Obama was scared, and they brought it all the way down to $600 billion in a time when the co uh, country mm -hmm. and the economy desperately needed it. Steve Bannon is proposing under Trump to spend a trillion dollars in infrastructure, and so they probably will do it. And one of the reasons why is not just because they're Republican and Obama was weak, but because um, under Obama, you know that stimulus spending is going to be offset because he's responsible, uh, to Michael's point. There's going to be an increase in taxes. Under Trump, he's, there's no responsibility whatsoever. They're just going to pile on debt. They're going to cut the taxes. Yeah, instead. they're going to cut taxes and do a trillion dollars in, maybe, uh, hopefully, do a trillion dollars in infrastructure spending yeah. and go, who cares? And we'll just drive up the deficit. And it, the minute a Democrat wins, we'll say, goddamn deficit. Why isn't the Democrat doing anything about it? Young Turks membership is awesome. Says who? Says me. But. Please believe me. TYTnetwork.com slash join.